It's hard to give a talk after such a, a, a vision talk. I hope I can influence your brain in a therapeutic ways. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is work done by, by Rama when he was an intern at Google. And this is in collaboration with uh, Sammy Bengio and Kevin Murphy and Devi Parikh and myself. So this work is about the problem of mapping an image, uh, like the one on the left, to natural language description, uh, which is also known as image captioning. And this is an, pro an important problem because as you try to understand complex visual scenes, you need a way to represent rich knowledge. And language is kind of the common API that humans develop to, to pass knowledge. So this is an important task. And there's a lot of, for that reason, there's a lot of recent interest and a lot of work in image captioning with impressive results. The point that we want to make here is that when you describe something, you need to decide what's important and what's not, what's relevant and what's not. And when people use language, they do that implicitly, they, they use context implicitly. Um, they often assume something about what the listener might be interested to hear. So what we can actually do is uh, we can use context explicitly. So here's, um, here's an example. Uh, originally, if you want to describe the image on the left, you might want to create a model that maps that image to a sentence like an airplane flying in the sky. But given uh, another image as context, maybe you want uh, a better description would be this uh, more discriminative description, which is a large passenger jet flying through the sky, because that sentence is much more specific to the image, to the, to the first image, right? So how can we learn, oh, oh sorry, uh, and a related task is the following. Um, often a uh, classifier gives you a classification decision, and, but you would be, you would like to tell, to know why that classification decision was made. So it would be interesting if a classifier could tell you, in addition to tell you, hey, this image is a uh, bird is a black throat wobbler, it could also tell you why, or give you hints or justification or explanation why it's that species and not some other very similar, visually similar bird, like, like this one. So in this case, similar to the previous case, but different, the context here is another class rather than just another image. So how can we build a system that take uh, such context into account? The, Naive way would be to construct large training sets where you take target images and uh, their context and you create a lot of discriminative descriptions and you train models with images and their context. The problem is that this, is, this doesn't scale, it's not feasible because the space of possible context is just too large. Uh, and for every different context you need different description, etc. So, and in some cases, the context is even not known in advance. For example, if you're in a conversation, the context keeps changing. You need to respond to what was just said. So the bottom line is that we need to develop systems that can learn or train without context and take into account the context at inference time. So how can we do that? So here's the, the more technical part. So, um, a baseline model, a baseline approach for training captioning is uh, where you try to uh, you try uh, doesn't really work. Okay, the to find a sentence S whose likelihood is maximized given the class, the target concept T, and an image. So that's that's kind of the baseline of what people do. And so note, this is a case where this is. Uh, class aware, but not aware to the context. So what we do here is we change this objective function by adding a second term. And of course, the, you have a hyperparameter lambda balancing the generative and uh, the second term that we just add. And this, this second term is discriminative. It's just a log likelihood ratio of the probability of the likelihood of the sentence given the target concept divided by the likelihood for the descriptive concept. And the important part, comp uh, point here is that this discriminative term, it has the, uh, the, the, co the target concept and the distractive concept isolated in the numerator and denominator, which means that you can train without the context and only use the context at inference time. 
And the hyperparameter lambda balances how much you want to be generative or discriminative. So you can rearrange these terms and use, the fa use a, a model sequence uh, using conditional independence, kind of a mark of chain assumption, and you can rewrite this term as a sum of terms that you want to maximize for every word in the sentence. So how can we effectively find numerative uh, descriptions that follow this objective? So here we build on uh, something that's widely used in sequence models called beam search. So let me explain that for, uh, briefly. So the idea is that you iteratively create word after word, and at every step you keep the top k most likely words well, with a maximum likelihood. And, um, so you create word after word. In this case, I'm just showing you the top one. And you would get something like white belly and breast for that uh, image. Now, in our case, we also have a distractor class. And we trained its own separate RNN. And the question is, how do you combine the, this, the, gener the target sentence with the dis distractor sentence? And the approach that we take is actually very simple. Again, we do iteratively, we keep top k uh, options. But at every step, we take the top k options for our objective function that ma balances this uh, generative and discriminative. And you keep treating as history the sentence that you just generated, the ones in blue, and you will get something like blue, throat, and wings with this distracted class. So, so that's the approach. Uh, let me describe to you a, f a couple of uh, experiments uh, to show you how this works. So the first experiment is this uh, problem of justifying classification, explaining why uh, uh, the image is from one class rather than from a similar class. So here we use a data set called Cub2011, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, it has 200 bird classes, about 11,000 images, uh, with each with uh, five captions. And what we did to evalu for evaluations, we took a target image and we sent it to raters with uh, a class that is very similar visually. Uh, turns out they also share similar names, uh, naturally. So here are um, a few examples. Oh, sorry. Um, let me first show you some quantitative evaluation. What I'm showing you here is on the y-axis is CIDR score. That is a measure that uh, tells you how much the sentence that was de created by the system, how similar it is to the sentence created by the person that, that has seen both the target and the context. And at the x-axis, this is the parameter lambda that balances generative and discriminative. On the far left, oops, oh, that's interesting. Uh, on the far left, uh, which was supposed to be there in original PowerPoint, uh, you get uh, models that are completely discriminative. So they are no longer well-formed sentences. On the right, you have something that is just generative, completely ignore the context. And somewhere in the middle, the performance is better. Um, I'm showing you several baselines. Uh, w using the image actually helps. That's the orange curve compared to the gray curve. Um, the green curve is uh, from a baseline method that, that uh, used a different um, uh, uh, optimization technique. And turns out that in the middle ground, our approach is a bit more uh, effective. So let me show you a few examples, because actually, with this project, these examples are really fun. Um, so what I'm showing you here, on the left, is the target class, uh, this uh, Rufus hummingbird. And on the right, there is another type of hummingbird as a context. And what I'm showing you in the middle is the set of descriptions uh, with different weights of the discriminative term. So if you look at uh, just at the bottom, this is the case where you're context blind. You're just describing the image on the left, and the description is a small size bird that has very long and pointed bill. This is a pretty good description, but it's really generic for hummingbirds, right? But as you crank up the discriminative component and you go up here, all the way, let's say, to lambda equals half, you get a sentence like, this is a bird with brown with red on its neck. And this is uh, so much more specific and fits this type of uh, hummingbird compared to the context. Great, thanks. 
Now, as you go up where lambda equals zero, where you're just discriminative, you, you get sentences that there are no longer well-formed sentences. Uh, tarsal, orange, white, brown wings, because only it, it, it tries to be really, really discriminative without trying to, to speak English. Um, a second example, the image on the left from this uh, Tennessee wobbler with the context class on the right, another type of wobbler, and the description in this context is, this is a gray bird with white eyebrows, and indeed uh, the white eyebrows are kind of distinctive. If you use another context, another type of wobbler that also has white eyebrows, the description changes, and now it is more discriminative regarding to that context, uh, like small green green bird. You see it's not well, very well formed still. A second um, set of experiments uh, was with uh, images as context. Uh, here we use a data set from uh, uh, Coco, and you have a target image and a destructor image as a context, and we chose the destructor images to be both visually similar and semantically similar in terms of their descriptions had overlapping terms. And we can evaluate that by presenting the two images to a reader and giving them the description, asking them which image uh, does the description uh, correspond to. So just a few examples on the, on the top left. So in green frame, this is the target image, and the destructor image is in red frame. The baseline model would say something like a man and woman playing a video game. And with context, you get a man is sitting on a couch with a remote, which is much more specific to that image. On the right, uh, the infamous uh, giraffes of Coco, uh, the baseline tells you a giraffe stand near a tree. All giraffes stand near a tree. Uh, not very uh, distinctive. Uh, with context, it tells you that this is actually a giraffe standing near a, a wooden fence, which is more specific. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of losses. Um, two extreme cases, one where the context doesn't, on the left doesn't really change anything. Uh, and on the right, a case where the context actually messed completely the model. It just uh, started to say things that are not relevant. So these systems are, of course, far from being perfect. So uh, just to summarize, I described to you a way to do context-aware captioning uh, by considering context at inference time, but not during training. And I showed, uh, we described a, an effective beam search approach that, that uses this generative uh, discriminative objective. And finally, I showed you how we can actually use context in several cases, both using images as context or classes in, as context. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Gal. Uh, so we have time for uh, one question from the audience. Any questions? Oh, here's one question. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thanks for a fantastic talk. Um, how did you uh, decide on beam search as the procedure as opposed to something else? Um, it, it's kind of a so. It's kind of a natural <laughs> decision. Uh, it uh, fits well to existing um, uh, code and, and system. There's a, uh, uh, some good understanding about how you, how you tune the parameters. So that's a natural, natural decision. Uh. Thank you. Thank you, Gal. Let's thank Gal again. Thank you. Thank you.